station, this is the voice of America. How do you hear me? We hear you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the space station. Oh, wonderful. I wish I could be there in person to do this interview. Um, we have uh, standing by who wants to say a quick hello, uh, John Larson. He is the CEO of the Broadcasting Board of Governors. Commander Kelly, cosmonaut Kornienko, welcome to Voice of America. Thank you for taking the time to do this interview with Ann. We really appreciate it. Well, it's uh, it's our pleasure, and we're we're happy to be here today and be able to share the uh, the International Space Station and our, our joint uh, space station program with you all. Um, Scott and uh, Mikhail, you are space pioneers. This is the first time um, that anybody's been up in space longer than six months, and you've been there 11 months now. We, we had someone um, from our worldwide audience at VOA write in and uh, wanted to know from Ethiopia, what is your mission? Can you tell us? What is your mission? What are you doing up there? Well, this actually isn't the first time people have been in space for longer than six months. We've had crew members on the International Space Station longer than that, I think uh, a little bit over 200 days. And the Russians uh, have flown cosmonauts on the, uh, the Mir space station, I think Salyut before that, for a year um, and in some cases longer. But this is the first time we're flying this long on the International Space Station. Um, we've been here for over 10 months and uh, we'll leave in March. We launched in March. And our mission here is to understand the effects, mostly the effects on our, our physiology and, and psychology of long-duration space flight so we can uh, eventually go on to Mars. And the space station is a really unique uh, facility to do this kind of research, and we have it now, so we, we should use it for that. What are some of the highlights of your research? What have you found um, so far? So there are about 400 different uh, scientific exper experiments going on here throughout the, the course of the year that Misha and I are here. And they're in all different scientific disciplines. Some of them, however, are dedicated to our, our time on board. And those are mostly related to our physiology. There's, uh, there are issues with long duration space flight. And the, you know, the longer you stay here, the potentially the, the, the uh, problem or the problems that can occur with our physiology increase, such as bone loss and muscle loss, effects on our vision, um, you know, even our, our cardiovascular health, uh, effects on the, uh, from the radiation environment, things like that. And we've, we've done a lot of recording of the da data. Last week we had a, uh, an experiment in the Russian segment that used a lot of the, uh, the imaging technology we have here on the U.S. segment by using their device that puts negative pressure on our body to look at our, you know, the vessels in our head and our heart and our, uh, our eyes uh, to see if there's an effect on our vision. And all this data um, that we've been collecting over there it needs to go down to Earth and analyzed. And, uh, you know, it's really not until the scientists have collected it all will they sit down and take a very close look and see exactly what we've learned and then report on it. And how is your vision? Have you had any problems with your vision? You know, I was up here last time for 159 days, and I did have some uh, some effects on my, you know, the physiology of my eyes that were measured actually when I, I returned. But uh, I, you know, my experience hasn't been much different than last time. I do notice some effects uh, initially, but those have have uh, stabilized. But to, to add to your last question, you know, what have we learned since we've been up here? One thing I have learned is that a year is a really long time. Yes, well, I, I was going to ask both of you, um, what, is it, what is the psychology of being confined in the space station for a year? Are you guys going stir crazy? 
Well, I'll let Misha speak for him, himself, but, uh, you know, I don't feel like I'm going, you know, stir crazy. I'm not really actually sure what that means. Um, to be honest with you, I, I don't feel like, uh, you know, I have this, you know, sense of, you know, I got to get out of here, you know, as soon as possible kind of feeling. Um, I do miss a lot of things on Earth. I definitely look forward to going home. But I do, you know, appreciate this opportunity. And, I, you know, I think what we're doing here is important. And it does seem like a privilege. So, you know, on one hand, it's hard, you know, being up here for this long. And uh, but, you know, when we, you know, recognize the importance of it, it uh, you know, makes it makes it easier. And I'll let Misha answer for himself. I fully agree with my colleague and my friend, Scott. I can only add that uh, we were selected uh, based on uh, how reliable and how tough we are. So if necessary, we can uh, break this record even further. I wouldn't say this is easy, but I think we could uh, stay here for a little longer and uh, make one more step. Yes, and, and I wanted to ask um, Mikhail this question, that um, in an interview before you left Earth, you said, if we could send the two presidents up for two weeks, problems on Earth would be settled. So what do you think about that now, 10 months later? Is it time to use the space station for such high-level talks? Is this a way to get peace in the world? I can only confirm the words that I said prior to launch. Because I become more and more confirmed in the fact that, given how long we've been here on station and uh, during the entire flight, which is a proof, uh, that how we can effectively work together we, meaning people from uh, different countries of different confessions, together in space for the benefit of uh, humanity. So I can only confirm my words. Uh, if we could send our politicians here for a month or a month and a half, then all the problems on Earth would be resolved much easily. Uh, Scott, let me ask you this. You've taken these beautiful pictures. When you look down at Earth and when you look out to space, what do you see? What, what do you think about? How does it change your view of humanity and life on Earth? You know, uh, so just to put this in perspective, I, I follow the news very closely up here, and we have the, the news going on um, in the adjacent module pretty much all the time, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you're always kind of hearing it. And uh, you do get a sense that you know what's going on on Earth and you pay attention to it. And you look down at, at the Earth, there's a window right down here, and uh, you do feel uh, detached from it. And it does, between those two of those things, just kind of following what's going on very closely and, and feeling some detached from the planet, you do get a sense that there's a lot of bad stuff going on down there all the time, you know, like the news is mostly bad. And it's, uh, you know, it's really unfortunate and really sad that, that that's the, the case. Um, you know, I'm certainly not blaming the people that report the news. I'm just saying, you know, as an observation, there's, uh, you know, it's mostly bad stuff that, uh, that we hear about. And um, it's really a shame because when we do look down at the earth, it is such a beautiful place. It's, uh, you know, it's our home. And, uh, you know, it's a home that we need to, to take care of. You know, we're all in this, this kind of like on the space station here. We're all in this together. We need to rely on ourselves for, for our, you know, our survival. We kind of feel the same way about the people on Earth that, uh, you know, when we look down there and get a little bit of a sense of that. And also, obviously, to, you know, protect the planet because it does look very fragile from space. So you do get a little bit of a different perspective, I think, spending this much time, uh, you know, away from the planet. Thank you for joining us, um, Scott and Mikhail. We're out of time. Thank you for being with VOA.
Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the Voice of America portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from Westwood One. Station, this is Westwood One. How do you hear me? We hear you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the space station. Currently circling the Earth in outer space aboard Expedition 46 of the International Space Station, astronaut Scott Kelly and cosmonaut Misha Kornienko. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning, and it's uh, great to be here with you today. I assume it's appropriate to say good morning, Commander Kelly. Do you refer to time and the vastness of space as something as insignificant as morning, noon, or night? Now we, uh, you know, we work on a similar clock. It's uh, 2.30 in the afternoon for us. We're actually on uh, Greenwich time, so it's, uh, you know, a good, good part through our, our work day. But uh, since you said good morning and your listeners, it's uh, probably in their morning. I figured I'd say good morning, too. Flight engineer Kornienko, for many American children, especially those of us that as children saw the lunar landings, we put astronauts right up there with superheroes like Superman and Spider-Man. Are you treated like a rock star in Russia? Вопрос Михаил Корненко у нас вот в Америке после посадки на Луне отношение к астронавтам как к супергероям, к Спайдермен и так далее. Как космонавтам относятся в России? Ну, большинство людей, наверное, примерно так же относятся. Ну, конечно, I'd say it's approximately the same uh, uh, treatment, uh, probably, no, I'm not treated as Spider-Man, but uh, uh, probably treated as uh, people who are resolving a very important task for entire humanity, somewhat uh, as if we were heroes, but uh, it's uh, probably a bit overrated. I guess just as people who are performing a very important task and uh, we are probably the tip of a huge pyramid which is beneath us. Commander Kelly, you're in space for a unique study. You have an identical twin brother, Mark, also an astronaut, but at present he's here on Earth. I assume he's doing all the same rigorous, time-consuming tasks you are for this study. He's doing a lot of this, this stuff, the stuff that's related to that uh, specific uh, study, obviously. A lot of the data collection, uh, all the, uh, you know, the imaging stuff we have, the MRIs, CAT scans, blood draws, other, other uh, bodily samples that we do. Um, and he's, he does uh, the psychological tests as well. And, you know, he's a, a good control where, uh, subject for this where... You know, nearly genetically identical, and NASA has a lot of data on on him from you know going back from 1995 when we first interviewed uh, to be astronauts. So you know, hopefully from this you know study, we'll learn learn something about you know the genetic effects and uh, you know areas where we need to go investigate further. I may never have another opportunity to ask someone that's had the perspective you've had of orbiting the Earth. So I'd like to ask each of you. What's your personal message for those of us down here on this little blue dot? Uh, flight engineer Kornienko, are we doing okay down here on Earth? То, что вы видите из космоса по поводу Земли, Михаил Корниенко, как у нас дела на Земле? Все ли у нас в порядке? Ну, к сожалению, не могу предаваться такому оптимизму, что на Земле все в порядке. Это особенно... I cannot be overly optimistic that everything is great on Earth, and this can be clearly seen from here, from above. I can only join my colleague and say that our planet is very fragile, so we need to take care of it, and this can be easily seen uh, from here. Say in 07, I mounted uh, the Kilimanjaro mountain, and uh, it had a glacier on the top of it, and now I can see what uh, uh, reducement has taken place. Mm. So we need to Command take urgent measures. Mm. Commander Kelly, you've had time almost a yeah, year still. now on this mission alone to consider the question. Anything uh, you would advise mankind? You know, I th this space station really demonstrates, um, you know, what we can achieve 
uh, very difficult things that we can achieve if we, uh, you know, put our minds, our expertise, our cooperation uh, to work. Uh, this is an incredible facility. It does incredible research. We've been flying it continuously for the last 15 years, and it, uh, you know, really, to, for me, reinsures the the power of our mm -hmm. our uh, our capability, the power of our, you know, ability to achieve great things. But, you know, when you do look down at the earth, we see, you know, often all the, you know, the stuff that goes on that's uh, not great. So it, uh, it makes me think that, you know, we have this great potential and we can always do better. Commander, there are hundreds of experiments that you're carrying out aboard the space station. The twin research being done on you and your brother, a big one. What's the uh, research all leading up to? Well, hopefully, uh, you know, that research, like I, like I said earlier, and the, the, the science that is, uh, has to do with Misha and I being here for a year is to expand our knowledge and understanding of the effects of, of um, this microgravity and, and space environment on our, our physiology and our psychology. So someday, hopefully in the not too distant future, we can go on to Mars and, and be able to mitigate these effects. And the space station is an incredible, incredible facility to do this kind of research. You know, we're not going to have this, this uh, space station forever. And we need to take advantage of it while we can to further our goals of exploring beyond low Earth orbit. Now, before you blasted off uh, from Earth, you were flying for the Navy in an F-14. That was right around when the movie Top Gun was so hot. When your astronaut days are over, you, you think you're going to go back to flying? Well, I think I'll always be flying. Um, uh, whether it's as an astronaut or even a private, uh, as a private pilot in, in some form or another, um, I enjoy it. It's, uh, it's unfortunate though I'll never fly the F-14 Tomcat again because we don't. Uh, uh, that plane was retired, uh, I think, in 2006, and it's uh, something I, you know, it's an airplane I definitely miss, and that's uh, you know a great part of our, our you know aviation history and the. Uh, you know, the legacy of that airplane will hopefully live on for a long time. Cosmonaut Kornienko, you've been in space before, but I don't think this long before. When you land, will you then have been the cosmonaut with the longest amount of time in space? Михаил Корненко, вы уже были в космосе, но не так долго. Когда ваша посадка состоится, будет ли вам принадлежать рекорд самого длительного пребывания в космическом пространстве? Нет, есть космонавты, которые летали гораздо дольше меня. Now, not sure there are cosmonauts who have flown many more days than I have. But uh, my colleague and I will share the record in terms of uh, a duration of uh, staying on the station. So we'll share this record together. Man, when you touch down, I'm sure there are a lot of operational assessments that uh, are to be done. But assuming, assuming you could get out of the capsule, meet up with your family, and do whatever you wanted to, what would you do, Cosmonaut Kornienko? Вот что вы сделаете, когда остается ваша посадка, и вы сможете пообщаться с друзьями и семьей, ваши первые действия после посадки? Посмотрю на небо снизу. I look at the sky from below and I'll hug the earth. Commander Kelly, what's first on your list? Commander Kelly, are we? You know, after like seeing my friends and family, the first thing I'm going to do when I walk into my house, I'm going to walk in the front door and I'm going to walk out the back door and I'm going to jump in my pool. And, uh, you know, I miss water and, uh, not just taking a shower, but that kind of feeling. Astronaut Kelly, cosmonaut Kornienko aboard the International Space Station. Thanks for spending time with us, and we look forward to seeing you both safely back here on Earth. Our pleasure. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event.